If I were to attempt to classify the story of the Daytona in the past decade, a word like complicated comes to mind. On one hand, the watch is still as legendary as ever, but with it being the poster child of the ascending secondary market trading values that have finally course corrected as of late, it has accumulated its fair share of baggage. This has caused many to not even consider the actual merit of the watch as a wearable object. Yet since we have seen the trading values of the Daytona drop nearly 50% in the past two and a half years, I wanted to give it a closer look to understand what the watch entails, walk through the updates with this latest generation unveiled last year at Watches and Wonders, and ultimately share some thoughts on what to make of the Daytona in 2024. As much as recent history tells a story of overwhelming dominance, the Daytona was not always sitting atop the pinnacle of attention from the brand. In 1962, Rolex became the official timer of the Daytona 500, and a year later, the brand released its reference 6239 Cosmograph, with the word Daytona added to the dial in 1964. The Daytona of the 1960s was not just free of weightless, it was frankly a slow mover for the brand, with early references not being produced in high numbers. As time passed, the Daytona gradually gained more appreciation among collectors, as it transitioned to the automatic El Primero base caliber powering the reference 16520 of 1988. As easy as it is to highlight recent history as being more important than in actuality, in the case of the Daytona, it is the case. The last 25 years have brought forth its heyday of popularity. With the release of Rolex's first automatic in-house chronograph caliber in 1999 with the 4130, and an unprecedented level of enthusiasm around vintage examples spiking in the 2010s. The excitement around the Daytona reached a monumental point in 2017 when Paul Newman's personal 6239 with its exotic panda dial hammered for an eye-watering $17.8 million at Phillips Auction House. The hype leading up to that watershed event and the aftermath of the staggering result was the tipping point that kicked off the Daytona fever. And at Watches and Wonders 2023, Rolex refreshed the Daytona with a new reference, the 126-500LN. So let's take a closer look at what's new. First off, the 126-500LN has tweaked several aspects of its design compared to the previous reference, the 116-500LN. Starting with the case, the lugs have been widened to make them more symmetrical looking than the previous generation, where the crown side lugs were thinner. The diameter is listed at 40 millimeters. However, when measuring from one outer edge of the bezel to the other, it clocks in at 38.7 millimeters in diameter. The watch certainly wears larger than what that number will indicate, yet for the most part, the feasibility of pulling the Daytona off for nearly every wrist size is still true with this version. Case thickness gets a significant reduction of about a half a millimeter down to 11.9 millimeters in total and the lug-to-lug -lug clocks in at 47.6 millimeters, with the lugs receiving more of a dramatic downward turn. The crown guards have received a facelift as well, and they're now broader and less pointed than the previous iteration. Another noticeable detail is the bezel, which now edges the serochrome tachometer bezel with a stainless steel ring that's integral to the case, appearing to give an added level of protection to the ceramic material. This will no doubt open up some debate on whether this is an aesthetic improvement over the former. Water resistance remains at 100 meters thanks to the closed case back, screw down crown, and screw down pushers. The bracelet end link has been modified to fit the form of the new lug design, maintaining its 20 millimeter lug width. The Oyster bracelet features brushed outer links and polished center links matching the anterior elements of the central case. The bracelet tapers before meeting a fold over locking Rolex crown sign clasp, incorporating a five millimeter easy link extension, which is more of an all or nothing solution in providing relief compared to something like glide lock. The dial sees a few incremental tweaks as well. One of the first changes you'll notice is the use of thinner text. Yes, you'll still find five lines of cluttered text below the crown logo at 12. However, it has been tightened up to take up less space. Another noteworthy change to the dial's landscape is the use of thinner rings surrounding the subdials. And this is definitely more noticeable in the Panda version where the black rings contrast heavily off the white surface. The applied indices follow a similar theme with their trimmer dimensions recalling the Zenith El Primero powered variants from the 1980s. Another small indicator of the latest generation is the crown nestled beneath the six o'clock index. And from there, much remains the same, including the pop of red running along the arc of the 60 second register, while the loom filled hands and markers shine decently. 
One of the biggest changes to the new 126500LN is hidden from view with the inclusion of the vertical clutch superlative chronometer 4131, the first update to the Daytona's movement in nearly a quarter century. Diving straight into the details, the column wheel actuated 4131 winds even more quietly than the already unobtrusive 4130, thanks to an updated ball bearing system with more ball bearings being available. The Chronogy escapement in tandem with the Paracrom balance spring is going to help alleviate the negative effects of magnetic fields. The balance is assisted with the inclusion of the Paraflex shock absorber, which neutralizes knocks through slight displacement to ensure oscillation is not disrupted. And although you can't see it through the solid case back on the steel Daytona, the movement decoration has leveled up with a skeletonized rotor, gold filled engravings, and Rolex Cote de Genève striping, which adds a polished band between the stripes. Still running at plus or minus two seconds per day, it's more of a refined presentation overall, and it's a real shame that Rolex only uses display backs for the Platinum and Le Mans Daytonas. In terms of general operation here, you're looking at 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stop in the seconds when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and a power reserve of 72 hours. When I hear the brand name Rolex, there is not one sole design that comes to mind first. If you are able to look at the broader history of their sports models, pieces like the Submariner and GMT Master have had the most consistent state of popularity while being transformative in elevating the brand and pop culture throughout the 20th century. What is remarkable is how in the past decade, the Daytona has become the poster child of modern day Rolex, a far cry from its reputation of the 1960s and 70s. In March of 2022, the Daytona reference 116500LN reached its peak trading price on the secondary market of $49,550 according to watch charts, being multiples of its retail price under $15,000 at the time. Since then, it has fallen considerably, now trading at $26,514 by August 28th, 2024. In the latest generation, the 126500LN trading for $32,940 with retail being at $15,100. Despite this noteworthy correction in pricing, the hype has created a lingering effect among the watch collecting public, where the Daytona is not seen as a watch. Instead, it is treated more like an unobtainable museum piece, never to be removed from the protective display glass. Now to answer the question posed in the title of this video, did the hype ruin the Daytona? To me, it's not entirely a yes or a no. On one side, it led to unparalleled excitement that allowed it to reach newfound heights. Unfortunately, this came with the consequence of the piece becoming so popular that many collectors that love the Daytona can't get their hands on it for prices that they can make sense of. This outcome I find to be a bummer because by nearly every metric, the Daytona is a phenomenal watch. Its design is unmistakable, it's effortless in its ability to incorporate into most daily lifestyles, and its thin case for an automatic chronograph makes for one of the most universally viable sports watches on the market in terms of wear. A watch this excellent shouldn't be about value retention. It shouldn't be collecting dust in a safe. It should be worn. With the recent updates in the secondary market, it appears the days of normalcy in watch collecting might be returning. In the meantime though, if you are fortunate enough to own a Daytona, do us all a favor, earn those scratches and wear it well. But all right guys, that is our video here today looking at the Rolex Daytona in 2024. I don't think there is a watch with as much baggage associated with it as the Daytona, at least a great watch that is with this much baggage. Cause the Daytona is a phenomenal watch. There's just the other aspects affiliated with it that are its number one challenges. But what is your take down below? Are you absolutely sick and tired of hearing about the Daytona or are you someone in this middle ground where you're hoping for it to return to a point where you can maybe one day obtain it for prices that make more sense to you. Leave some comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this style of video and like this insight into the Rolex Daytona and talking about it a bit more, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Really do appreciate that. Also check out teddybaldasar.com. Teddybaldasar.com is a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands. Every watch comes with a full factory warranty, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. And also if you have any questions, we have our team 
on live chat 18 hours a day. These are watch enthusiasts and experts that are ready to answer any questions that you might have about watches on our site. So definitely take advantage of that. And further, if you wanna support the content here, how we're able to fund all of these productions is through selling watches, is how this business operates. So if you are in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. Lots to keep doing what we're doing here, and we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.